بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد. The topic that we have for today is regarding the Quran and reflecting over the Quran. And so this is the month of the Quran. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن Allah mentions this along with the verses regarding fasting in the month of Ramadan. شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ And so after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed fasting in the month of Ramadan, He mentions that the month of Ramadan is the month in which the Qur'an was revealed. The month in which the Qur'an was revealed. However, it is very unfortunate that for many, many Muslims, the only time they know the Qur'an is in the month of Ramadan. Yes, the month of Ramadan is the month in which the Qur'an was revealed, but it doesn't mean that we abandon it. It doesn't mean that we abandon the Qur'an for the rest of the year. Rather, the Qur'an is a guide for us a guide for us to show us the path every single moment of our lives, every single day, every single month of the year. And with regards to the Qur'an, every single person is different with regards to his relationship to the Qur'an. And so with some, they simply pick up the Qur'an and recite it every now and then. Others, like I mentioned, only in the month of Ramadan. And for many, for many, the Quran is simply something to read, to recite, without any pondering, without any reflecting, without trying to understand the meanings of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us. <coughs> and so the Qur'an, they are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Revealed to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam They are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala His message to his servants And although recitation of the Qur'an at tilawa Is a noble act it has its rewards, as the Prophet ﷺ said, that whoever recites a single letter of the Qur'an, what is his reward? It is ten times. That is just one letter, not one word, but one letter of the Qur'an, you get ten rewards. So there's no doubt that the rewards and the virtue of reciting the Qur'an, they are very great. However, the main objective behind reciting the Qur'an should not be simply to attain that reward without understanding the meaning of what we are reciting. And so the very objective behind why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Qur'an to us is for us to understand its meanings, to reflect, to ponder over its meanings. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned this in various places in the Qur'an. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka liyadabbaru. Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun liyadabbaru ayatihi wa liyatadhakkara ulu albab Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us here the objective, the reason for why he revealed the Qur'an. He says that this is a blessed book. Kitabun mubarak that we have revealed to you, O Muhammad, that they may reflect, that they may reflect upon its verses, and that those of understanding, those people who have intellects, those people of understanding, that they may be reminded by these verses. And so here we can see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that this is the reason why He revealed the Qur'an. 
for us to ponder over its meanings, to reflect and try to understand the meanings of these words. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also rebuked those who do not reflect over the Qur'an. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنِ And Allah has mentioned this in more than one place. أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنِ Do they not reflect over the Qur'an? وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ, ال... ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا. What does Allah say after he asks, do they not reflect over the Qur'an? He says that if it had been from other than Allah, if this book was authored by other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would have found in it what? They would have found in it much contradiction. And so this is one of the miracles of the Qur'an, that until today, no one has been able to find any fault in it. Compare it to the previous books and scriptures that Allah had revealed that became corrupted by man's distortion. And so human beings became involved and they distorted the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Torah, in the Injil, and the other scriptures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so as a result, if you were to examine those books, you would find many contradictions. You would find many mistakes, many errors, many contradictions whereas the Quran till this day has been preserved and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here says that if it had been from other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you would have found in it many contradictions also as we mentioned earlier people they differ with regards to the Qur'an. And they differ also with regards to their listening of the Qur'an. And so, each and every single night in Ramadan, we hear the Qur'an being recited in Taraweeh. But every single person is different with regards to his listening to that Qur'an being recited. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Qaf, وَكَمْ أَهْلَكْنَا قَبْلَهُمْ مِنْ قَرْنْ هُمْ أَشَدُّ مِنْهُمْ بَطْشَا فَنَقَّبُوا فِي الْبِلَادِ هَلْ مِنْ مَحِيطٍ And how many a generation before them did we destroy who were greater than them, greater than Quraysh, greater than them in power, and they had explored throughout the lands. Is there any place of escape for them? Allah destroyed them. There was no escape for them. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna fi dhalika la dhikra liman kana lahu qalbun aw alqa sam'a wa huwa shaheed. Indeed, in this is a reminder. For anyone who has a heart, or who listens while he is present in mind. Ibn Qayyim, Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah, he says regarding these verses in Surah Qaf, and Surah Qaf is a surah that is extremely great. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to recite it in the Jum'ah khutbah. In fact, his entire khutbah at times would be just this surah. He would recite this surah and that was sufficient as a khutbah. And that is because of the many reminders in this great surah. The reminders regarding man, regarding his death, regarding what comes after death, and so on and so forth. And so Ibn Qayyim, he says regarding these verses that we just mentioned, he says that there are three types of people there are three types of people with respect to what Allah has mentioned here in this verse. And so what, what verse did we mention? Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ فِي ذَٰلِكَ لَذِكْرًا لِمَنْ كَانَ لَهُ قَلْبٌ 
أو ألقى السمع وهو شهيد. Indeed, and that is a reminder for for anyone who has a heart or who listens while he is present in mind. So this is regarding the Quran, regarding the words of Allah, those who listen to it. Ibn Qayyim says there are three types of people with regards to these verses. The first is a person with a dead heart. A person with a dead heart. He says this is the person who has no heart. So this verse is not a reminder for him. This verse is not a reminder for him because his heart is dead. And what does Allah say in this verse? Inna fi dhalika liman kana lahu qalb. Indeed, in, in that is a reminder for he who has a heart. So the one who does not have a heart or his heart is dead, then there is no reminder for him. The second is a person with a somewhat living and ready heart. It's not a fully living heart, not a fully attentive heart. Rather, it is a person with a somewhat living and ready heart, but who does not listen to the recited verses of the Quran through which Allah conveys His signs. So He has a heart that is ready to receive, to receive that guidance. But he does not listen to the recited verses. And he says he does not listen to its verses either because they do not reach him, because the verses do not reach him, or because they reach him while his heart is preoccupied with other things. So either he has not heard these verses of the Quran, they have not reached him, or they have reached him, he hears them, but his mind is not attentive, he is busy with other things. And so the heart of this person is not present, and hence this person does not receive the benefits of the reminder, even though his heart is ready to receive that reminder and that guidance. And so this is the second, the second type of person whom many fall into this category. We listen to the Qur'an being recited in Taraweeh, for example. But our mind is elsewhere. We are exploring the world. Our mind has gone far, far away from what is being recited. The verses, the words of Allah that are being recited. He says that the third type of person is a person with a live and ready heart. When the verses of the Qur'an are recited to him, he attentively listens. He does not keep his heart busy with anything except understanding the verses that he is listening to. This person has a present, this person has present attentive ears and a present and attentive heart. Therefore, he benefits from the recited verses and the signs that Allah mentions in those verses. And so this is the type of heart that we all must strive to have. This is a type of heart that benefits from what it hears of the Qur'an that is being recited. Ibn Qayyim, he goes on to say that the first type of person is like a, bl a blind man who does not see. So the first type of person we mentioned was the one with a dead heart. He is like a blind man who cannot see. The second is like a person who sees, but he looks in the opposite direction. He sees, but he looks in the opposite direction, he looks away. And so both, the first and the second, they do not perceive the Qur'an. They do not reflect over the Qur'an. As for the third type of person, then he is a person who sees and he looks at his target. He follows it with his, hear, with his eyes and his ears. This is a person who truly perceives the Qur'an. This is a person who truly perceives the Qur'an, understands its meanings. 
And so this is what is required of us. To not only recite the Qur'an, to not only listen to the Qur'an being recited, but to reach a level where we benefit. We benefit from what we are reciting or benefit from what we are listening to of the Qur'an being recited. And we also have the Prophet wasallam as the best of examples. He is the best of examples in everything. And he is also the best of examples when it comes to our relationship to the Qur'an and reciting the Qur'an with pondering and reflection. And so Hudayfa radiallahu an, he said that I once prayed with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at night and he was reciting Surah Al-Baqarah. So I thought that he would bow at the end of 100 verses, 100 ayat, but he continued. I then thought that perhaps he will recite the entire surah in one rak'ah. And this is Surah Al-Baqarah, it's not any surah. It's the largest surah in the Qur'an. So then he finished Surah Al-Baqarah and he continued on to Ali Imran. He finished the entire surah and then continued on to Surah An-Nisa. These are the longest surahs of the Quran. And then in Surah An-Nisa after about 40 verses he came across one verse. The Prophet sallallahu he's reciting these verses and then he came across one verse and that is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئْنَا مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ وَجِئْنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَؤُلَاءِ شَهِيدًا He came upon this verse and Ibn Mas'ud رضي الله عنه in another hadith he says that he came and he started crying at this verse. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here, so how will it be when we bring from every single nation, from every single ummah, a shaheed, a witness? And this is on the day of judgment. Allah says, how will it be when we bring a witness from among every single nation, every single ummah, and we bring you, O Muhammad, as a shaheed, as a witness against these people, against your ummah. And so the Prophet ﷺ wept when he came upon this verse. The only way he could have wept and cried is if he was actually attentive and pondering, trying to understand and reflecting over what he was reciting. Not like most of us who we just recite leisurely without trying to understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. Also, in the same hadith of Hudayfa radiallahu an, he mentions that when the Prophet sallallahu was reciting these surahs, Surah Al-Baqarah, Ali Imran, whenever he would come across a verse that mentions glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu would glorify Allah. So he would say, Subhanallah. And when he would recite a verse that contained a dua, he would make dua. And when he recited a verse that dealt with seeking refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-isti'adha, then he would seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of this proves to us that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was attentive in his salah, understanding what he was reciting, reflecting over the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he was reciting. 
unlike most of us who we have no clue what the imam is reciting. And even for those who know Arabic, I mean, for some, we may be thinking that I don't know the language, so how can I understand? But even many who know the language, who understand, even many of them, their minds wander off. And they don't pay attention. Not only do they, if you were to ask them, what did the imam recite? Not only would they not be able to tell you which verses he recited, but they wouldn't even be able to tell you which surah he recited. I mean, that is how far we have become from the Qur'an, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he would invite us to reflect over the verses of the Qur'an. And so, when the last verses of Surah Ali Imran were revealed to the Prophet sallallahu where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ لَآيَاتٍ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ أَلَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا سُبْحَانَكَ فَقِنَا عَذَابِ النَّارِ These verses from the end of Surah Ali, Ali Imran, when they were revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that he said woe to anyone who reads these verses and does not ponder over them. And so he is basically praying against anyone who reads these verses and does not reflect over them. Why? Because these verses, they mention many signs of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in his creation. And so Allah says in these verses, إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ لَآيَاتٍ لِّأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ Verily, in the creation of the heavens and the earth and the alternation of the night and the day, there are signs for those of understanding. For those of understanding. Meaning, those who try to understand, who try to look at this universe this earth, the sky above us, the day, the night, the alternation of the day and night, how the day enters, how, did, how the day leaves, how the night uh, enters. All of these are signs for a people who understand, who have minds to understand and reflect with. الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ Those who are reminded, or rather those who try to remind themselves and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while standing and while sitting and while on their sides. Those who, the remembrance of Allah is always on their tongues and in their hearts. وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ And they reflect and think about the creation of the heavens and the earth. And they say, رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا سُبْحَانَكَ فَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ They say, Our Lord, you have not created any of this in vain. You have not created any of this aimlessly. Meaning, what do they say? They say that, Oh Allah, you have created this entire universe that we are witnessing that we are looking at the heavens above us, the stars, the alternation of the day and the night, all of this, O oh Allah, you have created for a purpose. You have not created any of this aimlessly. Subhanaka faqina adab nar glory be to you. Save us from the punishment of the fire. And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said Woe to anyone who recites these verses and does not ponder over them. We also have the examples of the best of generations. The Sahaba and those who followed them in righteousness. How they dealt with the verses 
of the Quran. And so Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhuma, he, he said that performing two rak'ahs, performing two rak'ahs with reflection, with reflection over what is being recited of the Quran, performing just two rak'ahs with reflection is better than performing salah and prayers the entire night without a heart, without reflecting with one's heart. And so some of us think that, you know, let me pray as much as I can in the night and pray and pray. But we pray without reflecting over what we are saying. This is exactly what Ibn Abbas means here when he says that to pray just two rak'ahs with an attentive heart, pondering over what one is reciting, is better than staying up the entire night and praying, but not having an attentive heart, not trying to understand what one is reciting. Also Uthman radiallahu an, he said, if our hearts were clean and pure, we would never become tired of the Qur'an. And so some people, they become tired with the Qur'an being recited every single night. They find it difficult to stand in taraweeh and qiyam when the imam is reciting long ayat and surahs. They find it difficult. And so that is because their hearts are not clean. And so Uthman radiallahu anhu, he says that if our hearts were clean and pure, we would never become tired of the Quran. And that is the reality of what we see today, that many have turned away from the Quran. And when the Quran is recited in Salah, they find it very, very difficult and they don't find it enjoyable. And that is because our hearts are not clean and pure. Also, we have the statement of one of the great scholars of the Salaf, Al-Fudayl ibn Iyad, who said that the Quran was revealed to be implemented, to be acted upon. But people made its recitation their aim. And so this is in the time of the best of generations. So how about today, centuries later? And so he says that the Quran was revealed for us to implement it, to act upon what Allah has mentioned in the Quran. However, people have taken it to simply be something that is recited. And that is a reality. We find many Muslims, they only come to the Quran on certain occasions. Whether it be a wedding or whether it be the death of somebody and especially at the time of someone's death, they come and they recite the Quran. The rest of the time, the Quran is on the shelf. They have abandoned the Qur'an. And so the people, they asked Al-Fudayl ibn Iyad, when he said this, they asked him, how do we implement the Qur'an? You said that the Qur'an was sent to be implemented. So how do we implement the Qur'an? He replied, he said, by holding on to its, or, or rather by holding its permissible acts as being permissible. Basically, by considering what is halal as being halal. So whatever Allah has mentioned in the Quran as being halal, we believe that it is actually halal and don't make it haram. And vice versa, making its prohibited acts as being prohibited. Meaning, whatever Allah has made haram in the Quran, we actually consider that to be haram. He says also by abiding by its commands and abandoning its prohibitions and reflecting 
upon its wonders. So all of this comes under implementing the Qur'an. All of this comes under implementation of the Qur'an. And so as you can see, one of the points that he mentions here is reflecting over its wonders. And so the Qur'an was sent to be implemented and for us to reflect over its verses. But now the question is, how can we reflect over the Qur'an? What does it mean, first of all, to reflect over the meanings of the Qur'an? What it means is that we try to understand its meanings in general, firstly. Secondly, to go beyond its meanings and try to bring out its gems and the many wisdoms behind these words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if one was to truly do that, he will come out with many pearls and gems and wisdoms from the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why is that? Because these are the words not of any human being, but rather these are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are not invented words. They are not from the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rather the Qur'an is uncreated. And that is the meaning of it being uncreated. That they are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he himself spoke, heard by Jibreel alayhi salam, who then recited them to our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He heard them and passed them on to us. And so how can we properly reflect over the Qur'an? What are some of the ways that will help us to achieve this goal of a tadabbur or reflecting over the, the meanings of the verses and the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The very, very first means and way to achieve this goal is by turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a humble and humiliated heart. What that means is that we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, implementing that which He loves coming to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a clean heart. And so as I mentioned, as we mentioned, that those who do not reflect over the Qur'an, it is because they have dead hearts. Their hearts are dead. And so the very, very first step towards reflecting over the Qur'an is by coming with a clean heart. Staying away from everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited us from. Purifying ourselves and coming to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a humble and clean heart. And this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran. And so Allah says, Wattaqullaha wa yu'allimukum Allah. Fear Allah. Have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa yu'allimukum Allah. And as a result of that taqwa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will teach you. And so if you truly want to achieve success in anything that you want to study, then fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because in the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who teaches us what we learn. We don't learn it from our teachers, from our professors, from our own self-study. Whatever we learn, it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaching us it. And so Allah says, Wattaqullaha wa yu'allimukum Allah, fear Allah, and Allah will teach you. 
And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu in tattakullaha yaj'al lakum furqana. And so Allah says, O you who believe, if you truly fear Allah, if you come with taqwa, then Allah will make for you a criterion, a furqan, a criterion, something that you can distinguish things with. You could see evil as being evil and good as being good. You can see the truth as being truth and falsehood as being falsehood. Why is it that most of mankind are lost in misguidance? It is because they don't have that furqan. They don't have that criterion that Allah bestows to certain individuals whom he loves. Something to measure with, a criterion to distinguish between right and wrong, truth and falsehood. And so knowledge is light. Knowledge of the Quran, of the Sunnah, it is light that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throws in the heart of an individual. As for sins, whether they be minor or major, then they are nothing but darkness. And so we have knowledge which is light and sins which is nothing but darkness. And so anyone who wants that light, then he must go past everything that comes in his way of darkness, meaning that he has to stay away from sins as much as he can. And so if you truly want to sit and recite the Quran and understand its meaning, reflect over and ponder over its meanings, then the first step towards doing that is by achieving the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by implementing everything that Allah has commanded us to do and staying away from everything that he is that he has forbidden us from the second step towards achieving this goal of reflecting and pondering over the Quran is by studying and learning the Arabic language. And this is something that we cannot stress enough. And so it is very unfortunate that most Muslims don't have or don't give any importance to the Arabic language. And so this Quran was revealed in the Arabic language. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose this particular language for the Qur'an to be revealed in. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Qur'an that this is, that this Qur'an has been revealed in a pure Arabic tongue. Inna anzallahu Qur'anan arabiyan la'allakum ta'aqiloon Indeed we have revealed this Qur'an a Quran that is in the Arabic language so that perhaps you will understand and use your intellects. And the scholars have mentioned the importance of the Arabic language in terms of studying it, understanding the Arabic language. And so Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, he was known for giving special importance to this and so he had even mentioned that studying the Arabic language is actually an obligation upon every single Muslim. And he mentions that the reason for that is that in order to be a Muslim, you have to understand, you have to understand the very source of Islam, and that is the Quran and the words of the Prophet. And the only way to do that is by knowing the Arabic language in which Allah spoke these words and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke. And so if we truly want to gain that benefit from the Quran, then we have to give special importance 
to studying this language in which the Quran was revealed. And studying the Arabic language, yes, it takes a lot of time, a lot of effort. But the more effort we put, the more results we will see. But for those who are in that beginning stage of studying Arabic, they may be wondering, how can I benefit from the Quran at this stage? Then the answer to that is by at least reading the meanings of the Quran in whichever language you feel comfortable with. And so the point of reflecting and pondering over the Quran is that we come out with some kind of benefit from that. And so it is these words that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, re has revealed to us that we have to try to understand its meanings. So if that is not possible in the very Arabic language that these, ver that these words are in, then at least we should understand their meanings in whatever language we understand. Among the means and ways that we can achieve this goal of reflecting and pondering over the Quran and the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by imagining when we're reciting the Quran or when the Quran is being recited and we are listening to it, to imagine that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing me. To imagine that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is ad addressing me directly and not anyone else. And so in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses various ways of addressing us. And so sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, O you who believe. Other times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal nas, O mankind. Other times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses man himself. Ya ayyuhal insan. And so on and so forth. And so when the Quran is being recited, we should imagine that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing not only the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the companions, but that he, that he subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing me directly. And so when somebody is talking to you, what do you do? You pay attention. You give him your ears and your heart and try to understand what he is saying. So how about the Lord of the universe? How about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he is addressing us in the Quran? And so Al-Hasan ibn Ali, the grandson of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that those before you, those who came before you, here he is basically addressing the tabi'oon, those who came after, the next generation after the Sahaba. He says to them, those who came before you, meaning the Sahaba, they looked at the Qur'an as being letters, messages from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to them. So just like a person who has a loved one in a far off country and he expects or he's awaiting their letter being sent to them. This is in the old days, now we have internet, we have emails. But the point is that somebody who you love, you await and you're anxious to hear from them. You want to hear what they're saying. And so Al-Hasan radiallahu an, he says, this is how the Sahaba used to be with the Quran. They used to anticipate. They were anxious with regards to the verses of the Quran being revealed to them they would await for the next message and the next letter to come to them. Among the ways and means that we can help ourselves to achieve this goal of reflecting and pondering over the Quran 
over the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by constantly reciting certain verses. And so when you recite the Quran, don't just recite it in one tone and start it from the beginning and you know finish the surah without having gone back and without having repeated certain verses and so when you come across certain verses that stand out you should repeat them go over them again and again and so when you do this this helps you to reflect over its meanings and that is because when you just hear something one time it goes by and then that's it but when you go back and you review it it sticks and it stays with you and that's how we study for exams we go over what we studied again and again why because we want to properly understand it and we want to have it stay with us and so if that is with you know uh, studies of the dunya then how about the study of the Quran and we have an example of this the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he once was reciting the Quran in Qiyamul Layl and he came across one verse that he kept on repeating until as the narrator of the hadith Abu Dhar radiallahu an he says that it became morning it became morning and the Prophet sallallahu was still standing there repeating this one verse and that verse is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ma'idah when Allah mentions the story of Isa alayhi salam and how he will come on the day of judgment and Allah will bring Isa alayhi salam to testify that did you tell them to worship to worship you meaning Isa alayhi salam meaning the Christians and so Isa alayhi salam will say subhanak glory be to you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I never told them to worship you rather uh, I never told them to worship me rather I told them to worship you alone and then Isa alayhi salam what does he say and this is the verse that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi kept on repeating in tu'adhibhum fa innahum ibaduk wa in taghfir lahum fa innaka anta al-aziz al-hakim Isa alayhi salam says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in tu'adhibhum fa innahum ibaduk that if you were Isa alayhi salam says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you were to punish them then indeed they are your slaves meaning they are your slaves you can do with them whatever you please punish them as you please however in taghfir lahum fa innaka anta al-aziz al-hakim if you were to forgive them then you are the almighty and the all wise Among the ways and means that we can help ourselves to achieve this goal of pondering and reflecting over the Quran and the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by reciting the Quran and pondering over its meanings and asking questions and this is not the type of asking questions that is prohibited but rather asking yourself certain questions regarding the style of the Quran for example why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention this verse before this verse why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention this here and why he did not mention this somewhere else and so on and so forth and so 
these are basically questions regarding the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concerning how he revealed this Quran. And so when we do that, what will we come out with? We will come out with many gems, many pieces of wisdom that will further strengthen our iman in our hearts regarding this Quran as being the true word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not the word of any human being. Finally, among the ways and means that we can help ourselves to achieve the goal of reflecting and pondering over the meanings of the Quran is by remembering that we should always go back to the tafsir of the Quran and the authentic tafsir that are out there. And so when we say reflect over the Quran, try to understand its meaning, this is something different than the tafsir of the Quran. And so the tafsir of the Quran is basically the meanings of these verses of the Quran as explained by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or the companions or the scholars. As for reflecting over the meanings of the Qur'an, it is reflecting over these meanings that the scholars have mentioned. So basically, when we say reflect over the Qur'an, we mean reflect over the meanings, the tafsir of the Qur'an. And so the only way to do that is by referring to the authentic tafsir that are out there. And so we should not come to the Qur'an and recite it and try to understand it on our own rather we should refer to we should refer to the authentic statements of the scholars regarding the meanings of these verses and also remembering that uh, one of the one of the principles that the scholars of tafsir states uh, regarding uh, the tafsir of the quran is they mentioned al-ibra bi umum al la bi khusus al-sabab that basically what we gain from the Quran is the generality of the verses not the specific incident in which it was revealed what does that mean basically what it means is that the Quran was revealed over a very you know long time span many years and it was revealed in parts and each part of the Quran was revealed according to a certain incident a certain story behind it some verses of the Quran were revealed concerning concerning certain individuals but what the scholars say is that that does not mean that these verses are meant only for those specific incidents and circumstances. Rather, we take from the Quran its generality. We take from the Quran everything that is mentioned in it and implement it in our own lives. And so, inshallah ta'ala, in the coming weeks, we will go over some parts of the Quran, reflecting over their meanings and especially those parts of the Quran that all of us have memorized and we recite in our salawat such as Surah Al-Fatiha, Ayat Al-Kursi and other very important parts of the Quran. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from the people of the Quran, Ahlul Quran wa khasatihi wa, wa khasatih and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from among those who not only recite the Qur'an but also recite it and ponder over its meanings. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us to benefit 
from what we recite and listen to of the Quran, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the Quran in evidence for us on the day of judgment, not something against us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us with having the ability to to complete the Quran in this month of Ramadan, either reciting it or listening to it. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.